picking me on TikTok. How does it make you feel to watch him even now? I mean, you've seen him a million times probably, right? It's always fun, you know, being an engineer, getting to make things, seeing a tangible result. It's amazing. What a life. You also get to be a creative person, you know, almost an artist sometimes. Well, so you've invented Big Dog, Atlas, and Spot, too. Do you have a favorite? Do you feel like a father figure? I mean, they all feel like children. <laughs> they do, OK. Do you think that humans try to humanize Spot? You know, most robots, including Spot, are pretty dumb. It's really interesting. If you look on the web, when they don't know the robot or haven't been around it, lots of people fear it, or at least they talk about fearing it. But once they're with it, they want to pose for selfies with it. They want to have their kids drive it or know about it. Run up the stairs, go! So there are different case uses for robots today. Military, for jobs. What do you think are some of the ethical issues behind that? In the future, will we have to worry about killer robots or robots taking over humankind? I think that worry is way overblown and really a science fiction thing. Uh, robots are so limited in their intellect at this point that I just, uh, you know, if it ever happens, it's a very long way off. I think there's plenty of time for us to guard against that kind of thing. Really, in my mind, it's a balance between the opportunities, which are vast, and the risks, which I think are small, but some people think are bigger. We're going to try and just assemble diverse opinions and have a, a debate. You've been in the robotics industry 45 years, so what was that process like and what really inspired you to create a robot that can balance? You know, I was always a builder, uh, even as a kid, and uh, then when I was in graduate school I got a chance to, you know, work in a robot lab. And uh, one of the inspirations was when I went to a conference and saw a robot, a walking robot, that was a really slow mover that had six legs. And I just thought that, uh, you know, that, that we needed to do better than that six-legged thing. So, you know, in the early days, we did a lot of work studying animals. We filmed horses and measured how they moved. Uh, we looked at animals like ostriches. One of the mottos at our company is build it, break it, fix it. So rather than try and work all the time where everything's working perfectly. We go at it hard, uh, you know, find the weak spots by breaking the robot or making it uh, fall down or whatever it is. Then, you know, the engineers look at what happened and learn from that and then, uh, and then revise things and move ahead. And over the years, we've kind of refined the engineering, learned a lot about how the brains or the computer has to control the hardware, made much better hardware. But I think it's possible using some of the progress that's been being made in artificial intelligence to make robots that could uh, watch someone do a task, like a manufacturing task, understand what they were seeing, figure out how to do it themselves, and then do it. 